everybody. Oh. Welcome back to Two Poets Podcast. I don't know why I did that intro, but, you know, <laughs> got to change it up every now and then. Well, hi. Is well, that like hi. that cat in the meme? Yeah, the YouTube cat. <laughs> well, hi. That's awesome. Yeah, we're weird. Anyways, hey, welcome to the Two Poets Podcast, where we hang out, read poetry, write poetry, and talk about all things creative, or that we feel are creative what in a up? sense. Yeah, so glad you all are back with us. This is episode 14, Ben. 14. Technically, you could say this podcast has been alive for two weeks because of 14 episodes, Pretty much. but it's been a lot longer than that. We made it past episode 13, so that's a good thing. <laughs> that is a good thing, yeah. Just is it, is coming it, off of Friday the 13th, too, so oh, that's a good thing. Oh, it was Friday the 13th. <laughs> that's right, yeah. It'd be funny if we recorded that episode on Friday the oh, 13th. Totally, why didn't we think ahead on that? I don't know. We What's need to, like, do with themes, you know? Is there, like, a magic number where if it's, like, a podcast doesn't make it past this episode, they're never going to last, or, like... I don't know. All the podcasts I listen to, they have, like, 40 seasons and, yeah, like, a bajillion episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I wonder what the magic number is. Like, once you reach this episode, you're a success. Yeah. Or you're going to be a success. Yeah, it's like, if you, if you can make it to this episode, you probably have it in you to keep going. If you can make it to <laughs> your fifth guest... Or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's <laughs> we're true. pretty close to that. Yeah. It's just all about, you know, the passion and the drive to do things. But mm-hmm. hey, 14 episodes is not bad. You know, it's been a lot of fun. And, um, you know, sorry we've been gone the past three weeks. Life happens, but we still get together and do this when we can. And uh, that's kind of the, the beauty of it. We're not really putting the pressure on ourselves. It's just, hey, this is what we're doing. If life happens, life happens. Um, you as creative people listening should know that all too well. Mm-hmm. Life yes. happens. Life is life. Yeah. So Ben, speaking of life, how you doing, man? How's been, what's been going on the past three weeks? Uh, I'm doing Tell pretty good. Tell me everything. We moved to OKC and mm-hmm. we got a little like quaint townhouse in OKC. That's been really fun. Nice. And I've been slinging coffee and, um, working on really just getting, comfortable in the urban coffee shop environment yeah which has been a lot of fun a lot different than here a lot different um very similar but a lot different Mm -hmm. so it's been fun and it's surprisingly been stressful Mm -hmm. but in all these interesting ways that i wasn't expecting it to be and so that's been a lot of fun um, but yeah, I'm having a good time making coffee, uh, meeting a lot of new people and seeing a lot of familiar faces too. I had a lot of people coming in to say hi and, uh, I've seen some people that I haven't seen in a long time cause mm-hmm. they just walked into clarity and they were like, Hey, so that was fun. And then, uh, yeah, that's basically it for me. Um, yeah. Nice. Making coffee and living life. So, yeah, I guess my uh, in-laws had gone to OKC this last week and I guess they went to Clarity and they asked about you, but you weren't there. Oh, so. that was them. OK. Oh, did this, someone else say they it? said, yeah, there was there were there were people here asking about you and I could not for the life of me figure it out because they said that. The, the guy said, tell him the white haired guy says hello That's or West. something yep. like that. My first thought was him. Because I was like, he's the only person I know with white hair. Yeah. But then I was like, nah, would they really do that? I mean, you know, but yeah, that's awesome. So I I feel justified in thinking that that was the first person that came to my mind. So it worked. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. They, uh, they enjoyed their coffee. They loved it, but yeah, they wanted to say hi to you, but sorry, uh, they should have asked, they should have asked us first what day they were going. So we could have told them you weren't there. They should have. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) That's so funny though. I've had I've had a few people uh, come in. I saw Mark and Lisa Selix the other oh, day. Oh, nice. That was did they know fun. you worked there, or did they just happen to pop in? They just in? walked in because they were like, "Oh yeah, our daughter loves this coffee shop." And then Mark walks in and he sees me behind the bar, and he his eyes got so big. He was That's like, "That's awesome." What? I love Mark. <laughs> Mark's <laughs> such a cool guy. And so he had to get his mocha extra hot. Mm-hmm. That was fun. You're like, no one here actually orders that kind of drink, Mark. <laughs> oh, no, you'd be surprised. Yeah. So many mochas. So well, that's yeah, awesome. Man. What's going on with you in the world of music and art and construction and all the other crazy stuff? Oh, uh, well, I decided to quit it all. Not Good gonna, for you. Be creative no, I'm, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would never do that. Um, Pursue that nine to five cubicle life. That's right. That's all I want to do is be an accountant. <laughs> Not to say accountants are bad, but for me, that would be bad. Um, uh, well, big news. My birthday's tomorrow. Yeah. Woo-hoo! Today is uh, October 18th. 
that we are recording. So my birthday is tomorrow, October yeah, 19th. Yeah, so I expect awesome. all of you listening to send me happy belated birthday messages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right so now. I'm gonna, if you do don't, it. then you're not a fan of the show. Text Corey right now. His number <laughs> is, no, I'm just kidding. I yeah, right now, while we're recording, magically text me. <laughs> Here's my no, telepathy. Hear this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, just blast your number out there right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So my best tomorrow. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, I've been playing a lot of music lately. So I was I was kind of telling you before we started. I uh, have a band out of Oklahoma City called Honor Choir. Uh, we're about to do some recording, play some shows and stuff soon. Uh, pretty excited about that. Uh, but when we started that band back up. Uh, I bought a bunch of new bass gear and everything. And then another band, another guy in town hit me up. He's like, Hey, come play in my band. And I was like, heck yeah, I'll do that. And then I got another band approach me. Hey, come play bass for us for all these shows. And I was like, okay. And then I went from zero to three bands. And <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. In a lot of shows, but it's been great. I mean, I've been absolutely loving getting back into music and, uh, it, it fills my soul. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That sounds like a good name for a band. Zero to three. <laughs> yeah. Zero to three. Zero to three bands. Band. Zero to three in 30 seconds. The zero to three band band. <laughs> but no, that's been good. Uh, yeah, still working on the the art project, the big spaceship. Um, for those of you listening, it is itinerant immersive. You can go check us out on YouTube and all our weekly videos. Go check uh, it. But yeah, we're building some cool things. Ben's doing great things. His wife and Chris are doing great things there and we're super excited to get that done. But, uh, you know, working with artists, it takes a little while longer <laughs> than you plan, but... But it's the end fun. result is always worth it. Yeah, the end result is great. Totally. So, uh, yeah, just getting to do art every day has been a blessing. It's been amazing, and I absolutely love it. Uh, so just, yeah, art every day and doing music. So I couldn't ask for anything better right now. That's awesome, man. Living your best life. Yeah, finally. I love it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, I've been working on the book for that spaceship thing. And, uh, that's been a lot of fun. I was going back and trying to find old clips of, uh, like sci-fi TV shows and stuff mm-hmm. just for fun, just for like inspiration, you know? Yeah. Funsy. So like going back and watching like, uh, Star Trek and, uh, the 2001 and space odyssey, like mm-hmm. watching the ending sequence where he goes so far forward in, into the vortex of space that he ends up like seeing the older version of himself. Spoiler you know? alert. Yeah. So <laughs> that's been fun. And uh, if you haven't seen that movie by now, that's I mean, true. come on guys, 1968, let's go <laughs> like, or 65. I don't even know. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah. So that's been fun too. So very cool. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Awesome. Well, it is time to get into our prompt for this week and the poems that we have written. Um, oh, yeah. The prompt was the perspective of someone who was colorblind. And that was very specific. Very. <laughs> as a few of them have been. Uh, mine's a little short today. Um, nice. Sometimes I like them short. Sometimes I like them long. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but <laughs> she did. So that's good. Um, you want me to go first this time? Yeah, go for it, man. Awesome. So uh, disclaimer before we read the poems, um, we are not colorblind. Um, and I have... No idea what it's like to be colorblind, and so I don't want to, you know, say anything that is not right or whatever with someone who is colorblind, so forgive me if I say anything that's, um, I don't want to say offensive, but that's just, like, not correct. You know, this is my interpretation of Mm -hmm. what it would be like to be colorblind and in kind of a vague, generic uh, standard, so. And this is in response to a prompt someone gave us. Yeah, exactly. This is not, like, our prompt, but... Yeah. But if you are someone who listens who is colorblind, I would love to hear your perspective, what it's like to live a life. Absolutely. Um, you know, being colorblind. Um, so this is my interpretation of a poem of some, uh, the perspective of someone who is colorblind. Um, I call it chromatic silence. Ooh, deep. Deep. Uh, this is my short, sweet version. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> the grass is always bluer on the other side or red, maybe purple. But one thing I know is that I don't need colors to grow, she said. I hear stories of how beautiful a sunset is and the vibrant colors that it sheds, but what is vibrant? That is unfamiliar to me. The things others take for granted I only wish I could see, but I get a different perspective in shades of monochrome. In hues unseen, the world unfurls its grace, a tapestry of mystery in space. Each shade a secret hidden from my view, yet beauty thrives in forms that I never knew. Yet in this chromatic silence I find a realm of truth of hearts entwined. 
For colors may elude my searching sight, but love and kindness guide me through the night. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. I like the <laughs> I like the concept of someone kind of marveling after what true beauty is. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, it's like appreciating the mystery of it. You yeah. Know? Like that's really nice. That's really sweet. Yeah. So that is my take. Well done. One. Well, thank you. Well done. Um, I wrote a children's poem. Perfect. I mean, not really a children's poem, but kind of in that cadence of like Dr. Seuss ish. Mm-hmm. Cause I was, I just thought it was fun. Um, and I was like, I don't want to write the, I, I don't think I could write well enough from the perspective of someone who is colorblind. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I don't want to write the typical like love, like, oh, I didn't see until you came into my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was like, and okay. The colors have never been yeah. so brighter. <laughs> so I was like, oh, wouldn't it be fun to like write a children's poem that includes a bunch of colors? And yeah. I also like the idea of someone who has something like that that is limiting to them. Mm-hmm. And then making the conscious decision to live their life where they don't allow it to actually impact them negatively. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where this one came from. So this is called The Colorful Life of Mr. Biddle. Ooh. Mr. Biddle chooses to see a life of color extraordinary. He imagines the world around him bright, full of shades that are happy and light. When he wakes up in the morning, his slippers are pink. His toothbrush is vermilion, and so is his sink. In his kitchen, he prepares a meal. From a refrigerator, he imagines is teal. In the garden, he waters the plants while wearing his favorite jungle green pants. His roses are sapphire, his daffodils burgundy, and he washes his car, which is amaranth purpley. He carries an umbrella, which is canary yellow, and he walks his poodle, which is indigo bloodle. After their walk, they stop at the park where the birds are all fuchsia, including the larks. For dinner time, there is nowhere finer than Mr. Biddle's favorite red diner. There he imagines his lasagna citrine, and the pepperonis on his pizza are artichoke green. At home, he relaxes in his cotton candy pajamas, complete with lime green socks from Tommy Bahamas. Yes, Mr. Biddle chooses to see a life of color extraordinary. But there is a reason colors fill his mind. Over time, Mr. Biddle has become colorblind. But instead of feeling sad and full of self-pity, he imagines the world as he wants it to be. He refuses to let his eyesight determine his view of his life and himself as a person. That's why, when he looks in the mirror, he is happy and serene. That, and because he imagines his complexion atomic tangerine. (laughs) Dude, that was amazing. (laughs) No, seriously, that was amazing. I just thought it would be fun. I haven't done like a ch- like a children's poem yet mm-hmm. on the show, so I thought it would be kind of fun just to do that. So. No, that's perfect. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> I could see that actually being like a kids' book, like teaching about color and stuff. That's you know? kind of what I was thinking. Like, it would be cool to like have it have all the images be their normal colors, mm-hmm. but then you have like this little decoder screen or something. You put it over the color and it becomes the color that he, he sees. Thinks, yeah. I just thought that would be really fun. But yeah, we were talking about that on the drive up here. Like that would make a really fun children's book. <laughs> <laughs> but the screen, every time it goes over, it's just black and gray. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. It would be cool to make it where the images are like gray or whatever. And then, mm-hmm. and then it color lights oh, up when yeah. you put the screen over it but yeah the i don't know how you would do that though ah there's some ai program out there totally <laughs> there's totally you can make it an ebook and then it's like oh yeah so you click on this and click on this and see the color no that's really good man so was there any inspiration for that or just you just kind of wanted to do it i just kind of want to do something fun and uh I, I like the idea of someone being like um this thing happened to me it's beyond my control mm-hmm. and instead of like letting it change how I see myself. I'm going to view the world the way I want to. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just thought that was a good, it was like kind of fun to put a good little message in there too. So Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Heck yeah. Well, that was great. Well, that was our prompt given to us by Josh Carpenter last week. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh, for the, for the prompt. It was great. Yeah. Thank you everyone who's sent us prompts. It's been great. It's been a lot of fun. 
Um, yeah, so on today's episode, we're going to kind of do a little bit of a podcast recap. We're 14 episodes recap. in, and we kind of just want to recap a little bit of what we've kind of been talking about and doing and kind of just share what we've liked, disliked, and, you know, kind of just talk about what's been going on. And uh, for those of you who haven't listened to, if this is your first episode, <laughs> and you're jumping into this episode, you might want to go back and listen to the others, yeah. or you can just hear a quick recap of everything. Totally. That works for us. Yeah. Either way. <laughs> So we kind of started this podcast with the intention, well, first, you know, kind of talk about creative things, but we also wanted to challenge ourselves, you know, in our writing and our our poetry. And it's definitely been a challenge, uh, especially with some of the prompts that have been given. Mm -hmm. And um, so how do you think those have been going so far, Ben, with the prompts? It's been very interesting. It's funny how some of them are like vague in the sense of you have the freedom to kind of take it where you want it to go. And then some of them mm-hmm. are so specific. And so that definitely makes it more of a challenge. It, it is interesting because when you do writing prompts, typically they're more open ended. So you can kind of allow something to like come out of them. Yep. And so it is really funny when someone's like, write a poem about ducks and geese fighting over grapes or, or whatever, you know, and then it's like, yeah. Oh crap. Okay. <laughs> How am I going to make this work? <laughs> How am I going to do this? Yeah. So it's, it's interesting, but it's a good challenge because it does kind of put the pressure on you to deliver something. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, I think there's a lot to be said for that for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I think, I think they've been going really cool. Um, they've, yeah, kind of like you said, the ones that are more specific and more like there's really no vague way about it, like like the ducks, you know, or <laughs> this one, you know, for someone who's colorblind, it's that are very specific. Um, it's it's definitely more challenging yeah. on a specific topic than it is because you, cause you would think like, OK, if the topic's kind of vague, it's like, well, now you have an overload of ways you could go with it. And you think that might be harder, but if it's specific, it's like, okay, great. If it's specific, I know exactly what to write about. Yeah. No, when it's very specific, (laughs) it's very hard to write about. Yeah. Which is weird. When it's open ended, you can just kind of let it flow out Mm -hmm. of you, which is like pretty typical of poetry. I think, especially like free verse. If you're Mm -hmm. not, if you're intentionally (laughs) not rhyming everything, yeah, then it's very easy to just let it flow. But when it's, like a specific thing or a specific instance that, and they give you the result too. It's like a specific yeah. result. Yeah. That's a really challenging Or it's place. like, yeah, here's the ending there, right? The- yeah. You're like, how am I going to get there? You've mm-hmm. got to find a way to actually navigate from a starting point and reach that conclusion. And it still is like your own poem. You know, mm-hmm. it's got to be like your own piece. Yeah. And that's a challenge for sure. But a good one it's a good challenge for sure it's definitely been challenging and it's like yeah there's there's been times where you know with these prompts and with these challenges that like i can sit down and get one knocked out in 30 minutes Mm -hmm. and then there's times it's like down to the wire i spent all week couldn't think of anything and it's like all right i've got an hour till we're recording (laughs) i gotta get this done you know um and yeah and sometimes yeah they just like okay i'm done that was easy you know but it's just That's, that's the beauty and the craziness of writing. Yeah. You know, it's sometimes it's just, oh, just natural. It flows out beautifully. And then you're just banging your head up against the wall because you can't think of anything. And you're like, this sucks. And it's (laughs) like, well, actually everyone liked that. You know, it's weird. Yeah. It's like, oh, that one you did that last week. That was so good. That's my favorite one. And you're like, oh, that's the one I hated writing. (laughs) That's the one I was banging my head against the wall for hours and I couldn't get anything out. It it does kind of crush the myths about writer's block though. Mm -hmm. Like you, you do have to like writer's block is a thing that you kind of allow to hold you back. Like you Mm -hmm. can press through it and you can write something. It may not be amazing, but you can definitely write something. And so it's, it's interesting to be put in that situation because as a writer, you are like, you do come across times where you're like, I genuinely don't have anything to say. Yeah. And this is like, you still have to say something. You still have to put it out there. Yeah, exactly. So it, it does really bring the writer's block myth kind of crumbling a little bit because there's, there's really like no reason for you not to write something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm still kind of that firm believer that writer's block is a myth that it's, it's something we use to justify 
why we're not writing. Mm -hmm. You may not know what to write at the time, but yeah, you just write. Yeah. You know, and eventually all that gibberish you're writing will lead you to the thing that you need to write. You know, and like like they say, like all the greats, they're like, if you have writer's block, just start writing something stupid about right. flowers yeah. or start writing something stupid about frogs flying through the air, you know, just to get words out until you get there. Yeah, it's literally like just open open your mind and put something on paper or type mm -hmm. something and just see what happens. And on we were like even going through for the for the colors in the poem we went through and I went through like the, your primary colors and mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have red, blue, green, yellow, purple. And so we, and orange. And so we went through and looked up like I say, we, my wife was helping me with like the color aspect. Yeah. Um, Cause she's an artist and she knows colors. So, yeah. Uh, so we were like, we would go to like red and then you look up all these various Variations. shades of red that have crazy names and blues and all that stuff. And we just started writing down colors and it just kind of helps get you in the mindset for how do I how do I rhyme with cerulean? Yeah, you know? but once you get all those colors picked out, then you know what you need to rhyme with, or mm -hmm. at least a sound alike word. Yeah, you know, it or does. You need to put the inflection on the end differently so it can rhyme with a word. You it know? does help you kind of get a roadmap because mm -hmm. you you just throw pieces out there and then you can kind of piece them together and then you can kind of see oh I could start here and kind of work my way through this. I didn't end up using cerulean though. Yeah, kind of wish but I, it was I would, there. But you know, yeah. it worked. <laughs> so it was something you put out on paper and you yeah. knew that this is an option now. Totally, whether you used it or not. Yeah, yeah. At so least I got the ball rolling. A lot of times you're just—it's literally just like you're spitballing or vomiting things out, mm -hmm. and then maybe out of that debris you can pick a word up here or there that allows you to go a direction with it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah. So, what were some of your like? So going back on our, you know, for on our 14 episodes, what was some of your favorite prompts that you wrote about? Um, some of my favorite ones, I think that uh, the horror one. Yeah, that was really good. Probably my favorite. And then um, another one that I keep, like even just on my own, like going back to just to reread it mm -hmm. was um, the one on spirituality. Yes, that was I was going to say. That was probably one of my favorite ones I wrote was a spirituality. Yeah, one. Yeah, because it was just like it it was an open ended prompt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just it spirituality. Just, yeah, you just kind of got to take it wherever you wanted it to go and. I just felt like it was a good, it, to me, it was probably one of the more poetic pieces that I got to write mm -hmm. just because it was open-ended and it was just very like, it can be whatever it needs to be. And so I really enjoyed that one for sure. Um, what I, about you, man? Yeah. Spirituality definitely. Um, uh, I, one of my favorite poems that I wrote was, uh, do you remember the, the prompt your brother gave us about the song? Mm, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. By the TikTok. Yeah. Um, what was the, oh, the song I'm blew in the wind it. was the name. It was episode three. The prompt was we laid her ashes in Los Angeles. The music took her soul. She said, California will kill me, but the day it does, I guarantee they'll play mm -hmm. me on the radio. They'll play me on the radio. Clara so, Wade Lee, radio angel. Yeah. Yeah. I actually made the joke about radio angel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that, I mean, that prompt was take these lyrics and interpret them. Mm -hmm. That was basically the prompt was here's the chorus, interpret that, you know, yeah. and that was kind of our prompt for that week. And, I had a lot of fun with that poem for sure. That was a really good one. And you actually were able to develop that into more of a story mm -hmm. concept that yeah. I, was actually really good. It was really moving. Yeah. That and was one of the first that. ones that I did kind of a story concept where I start where I at incorporated the numbers for the ages and mm -hmm. like each part was a year. Um, so that was a lot of fun. So if you didn't, if you don't remember that one, go back to episode three and listen to that poem. That was a good one. Um, the, yeah, the horror was a great episode. The horror poems were awesome. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Oh, yeah, the one where we did A Time You Truly Felt Free or Felt Yourself. 
Um, that was a fun one to write. Mm-hmm. Um, those got deep that day. Yeah, that was pretty deep <laughs> for sure. Um, the I think it was episode two, write, write about the powers of language or the act of writing. Yeah. That was a really good one too. That was very like just free form flowing mm-hmm. concepts. I think that was the longest one I did. Or it was one of the longer poems I wrote. It was definitely one of my longer ones for sure. But yeah, what was your the title of your poem that you wrote on that one? Um oh I didn't I didn't write a title for oh, that one. Okay. Yeah. We've had so many. I've I've had so many where I'm like, I didn't title this. <laughs> this one's called episode two. <laughs> this is episode two poem. <laughs> Normally I titled them all. I don't know why I didn't title that one. It's funny. I keep going back in my notes and I'm like, oh crap, where's this poem? Where's that poem? Because yeah. I would write them and then I'd move them into an actual like poem folder. Uh uh-huh. and I can't find them because I'm not looking in the right folder. <laughs> Oh, I called it her story. That's right. It was okay. Oh, yeah, I called it her yeah. story. Okay, because I did the video of that one too. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. that Which we do one. more of those. We do. <laughs> yeah, and I titled mine "Soul Mirror," mm-hmm. and that was that was a fun piece to write. Very introspective piece yeah. for sure. That was a very introspective prompt. I, I will definitely say in these past fourteen episodes, like all of these prompts have been completely different from each other, mm-hmm. which has been very cool. And so that's allowed us to explore so many different topics already. Yeah. You know, or dive into things we wouldn't have really thought about or step into someone else's shoes. For sure. You know, so that's what I think has been really cool about these past 14 episodes with the writing part. You know, the first segment that we do is getting to be able to examine 14 different topics or prompts that are completely different from each other. Mm -hmm. So like it wasn't like. Well, that's similar to this one. It's like, no, every single one has been super different, you know, and then being able to explore all those different concepts has been really cool. Yeah, it has been really cool. It's been it's been challenging at times for Mm -hmm. sure, but it's a really rewarding thing when you actually take someone's prompt and then you develop your own concept out of it and then you Mm -hmm. put it into something that you are proud of. Like, that's a really good feeling for sure. Yeah. Do you think that... uh, this is something our listeners should do if they're doing like writing challenges or even art or do you think it's a good idea to challenge yourself in this way by Mm, doing like random prompts and 100%. I would, I would say like if you, if you need to get yourself a, some type of word generator yeah, and use that, even if you're like so many apps out there, Oh, there's so many, you know, like not even just for writing, if you're like painting or something, Mm -hmm. or you need, you want to paint something, but you don't know what, or you want to sketch or whatever, or you want to like shoot something, go get Mm -hmm. a, go get a word generator and generate a word or a phrase or something just to challenge your, your ability to take a word or a concept and mold it into an actual idea and into yeah. a work of art. I think that would be a really good challenge. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, if you're a painter or a sketch illustrator, yeah, give yourself. So, um, there's this guy I love. Um, his name is Jazza. He has Jazza studios. He's an Australian based artist and content creator. But nice. he, he developed his own app where it gives you generative prompts. So it can be like one word prompts or it could be like uh, a character, a verb and, you know, a situation, nice. you know, and then you have to like draw those things, you know, yeah. and they give you prompts. And so, yeah, if you're like an artist, illustrator, painter, yeah, get yourself these apps or, you know, something where you generate either one word or you generate a scenario and then challenge yourself it's probably going to look like crap the first time you do it, unless you're just already really good. You just want to like test your skills, you know, but yeah, why not challenge yourself? Or if you're a photographer who focuses on landscapes and you want to try something different, go ask to shoot your friend's wedding, go get a group of friends and do portrait photography Mm -hmm. just to give it a shot, you know, or challenge yourself to find very specific things in the wilderness, you know, or uh, yeah, you can even come up with prompts for like random animals or something and be like, okay, I'm going to go find that today. And I'm going to go shoot that. I'm going to go find a group of birds, you know, on a power line. I'm going to go find that and see for what sure. I can do for that. 
you could even make yourself like a scavenger hunt, like do yeah, a, a generator where you're like a generator for like a, a type of tree and then like a type of mm-hmm. insect or then like a type of car or something yeah. and make a list. And then you just go out on a day and you just find different things to shoot or find a place to sit and sketch those things or, yeah. or whatever. That could be a really fun activity. Or, yeah. Even if you're like a chef, do kind of like an iron chef thing, you know, it's like, heck yeah, generate random ingredients and make something out of it you know something that you think would never go together it's like well i'm gonna try to see if i can create something to make it go together you know awesome that'd be a lot of fun too i just think those steps that we take in our daily lives you know whatever it is you might be like they keep your brain fresh they Mm -hmm. challenge you to really test out your skills or not even not even test out your skills but to improve your skills you know because you're trying to do something you wouldn't normally do um and causing your brain to think differently that yeah I think it's, yeah, great for anybody. I think it's good, too, to, like, do things to break patterns. Yeah. Because it's so easy to get stuck in the same routine and have your day-to-day life be the same over and over and over. And you kind of need something to break that up. And sometimes you just have to disrupt your own pattern Mm -hmm. just to get yourself into a place where you can actually physically create something. Yeah. That's a good good thing to do, for sure. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, so challenge yourselves like kind of like we did we wanted to we wanted to challenge ourselves and this has been a great opportunity to challenge ourselves to write and it's been wonderful um it's opening up opportunities too absolutely um now we are going to do kind of some switching things up on the show a little bit um we so thank you all so much for your prompts uh we're going to go ahead and put a pause on the prompts for now um, because, uh, we wanted to kind of do that as a trial and kind of challenge ourselves. You know, we've kind of reached the point now where we've collected a lot. We did a lot of poems now. So now we want to kind of move into some more original content, um, where each week we're still going to write a poem or each time we get together and record, we're still going to write a poem. Um, but it's going to be more of an original composition from whatever we're inspired by that week. Heck yeah. Um, and then also some cool news that we are excited to announce to you all today yeah. um, is the reason you, I think we may have alluded to it on a couple of the episodes. We dropped shortly, some, some, some hints. minor hints here yeah. and there. But the reason we also have been doing all these prompts and challenging ourselves to write is because we're going to what, Ben? We are going to take these prompt poems and put them together in a collection as a book. Yeah, we're writing a book. Well, yeah. we basically already wrote it's a, half it's of the book. It's basically written. <laughs> it's basically point. written, yes. Uh, but yeah, we're so excited for that. That's the reason we also wanted to do these prompts so we can write, and then we're going to collect them all into a book where we will write pages on kind of our inspiration for the poems, our process for the poems, our thoughts on those poems, and then just our thoughts on creativity. We'll probably have some blurbs in there that we talk about specific topics to go along yeah. with it too. and. It's going to be really exciting, man. It is going to be fun. And then we need to find a celebrity to endorse it. Yeah, so exactly. So uh, the forward or if you're listening, celebrity, yeah. insert celebrity <laughs> name that here. Is. Yeah. <laughs> Give us a ring ring and write our fo- forward for us. Oh, that's awesome. No, but yeah, we're excited to actually, it's going to be a physical book that we are going to write and publish um, and then, you know, have some book signings, do some cool things with it and have an online store where you all can buy the book yeah. and you can have it in your, in your hands, fun especially those of you. It. Yeah. Especially those of you who submitted the prompts that are going to be in the book. Oh yes. That's the cool part. Be naming names. Yeah. Actually we're going to keep everyone's name out of it. Like, this is anonymous. our idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent copyrighted by the authors. Yes. Totally. <laughs> we did all of this. We did all of this. Don't sue us. We'll, we'll delete all the audio evidence. Yeah, right. Gosh. <laughs> Hopefully there's not any like weird overlapping copyright stuff. Like we, you ever like have those scenarios where someone wrote something that they thought was original and then like that's true. a poem was written like 50 years ago and it's like the same chorus of the song or something. <laughs> it's like, well, dang it. There's only so many words in the English dictionary. And- right. <laughs> What are they going to do? It's like, yeah, it's like music. There's only so many chords and melodies. Like, of course, there's going to be songs that sound similar. (laughs) Gosh, everyone is influenced by somebody and influence comes out in your work. Well, isn't that the whole point, too, as an artist is to steal from other people? Yeah, like, exactly. Steal like an artist, man. That's, that's until the whole you thing. Steal that's what you find your talking voice. about. Yeah, you steal till you find your voice. <laughs> steal till it's yours. <laughs> steal till it's yours. 
Still until it's in public yeah. domain. I'm excited, man. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun to have another like long term writing project. Yeah. Like we don't have enough of those. But yeah. I think it's gonna be a lot, a lot of fun to put that together. I've always wanted to do a collaborative work with yeah. someone. And so I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to work together on that. Yeah. So this will be, yeah, my first collab on a book. So yeah, we're collaborating, doing this great book yeah. together. Um we don't have any details on release date, anything like that. We're just letting you know that we are now in the beginning stages of piecing this book together, getting it kind of laid out. We're going to have some meetings, kind of lay out the uh, details of the book, how we want it to kind of be laid out, what we want to write about, how we're going to present the poems, blah, 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 all yeah. that fun stuff. It is happening. Yes, it is happening. So mark your calendar today that we announced it. <laughs> And in two years, when the book is ready. <laughs> in two and a half years. No. And the, and the plan is to keep this going, you know, keep this podcast going. With, and then as we develop more poems, guess what? Book two will come out. Yeah. So on and so forth. So this is a great way for us to write and then a way for us to get our writings back out into the world. Yeah. It's a fun, it's a fun challenge for sure. And it's fun to do it with one of your best friends. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, he's a best friend. Did you hear that? All right. Everyone write that down. He's a best friend. <laughs> I was talking about Rufio, but oh, whatever. Dang it. He's, over, he's in there. Oh, he's in there. Okay. No worries. <laughs> he's our supervisor. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> super excited for that for you all. And then, um, yeah, we'll get more, more info on that. We're also going to be having some meetings, getting some more, uh, guest guest speakers lined up yes i'm excited um, for guests yes yeah, so we, we need more guest hosts so if you want to be on the show you can hit us up too and <laughs> we'll, we'll talk but we need more guests on the show so we're going to be doing that too also we're going to be starting a new series where we do um reaction videos yeah we're gonna, we're gonna find some music that we like some spoken words some poetry just things that we feel are really cool in you know in the, in the lyrics and the words that are written yeah. and then we're kind of going to either watch the video and react to it or we'll listen to it or we'll read, read sections out of a book, whatever it is. But we want to use this also as an opportunity to talk about other writers, mm -hmm. other artists out there. That's going to be so fun. It's always so fun to find those people too, that have just, mm -hmm. they've either, they're either like brand new and no one knows about them or they've been doing it for so long that it's like people have not forgotten about them, but they've mm -hmm. kind of like just, continued slipping by and it's always fun to go back and revisit their stuff and find new things they've done that you didn't know they've done or whatever. Absolutely. So I'm really excited to dig and find some, some good artistic people to, to react to and to quote and to read. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, it absolutely. would be cool too. If like, if anybody out there has like a favorite poet or an artist that they don't, they know is not super, super popular and they wanted to mm -hmm. recommend them. That oh, would be yeah. fun. We would love to do that. that. I mean, that would be even better. Heck yeah. You know, if you know a local author or a local poet or something or a local songwriter in your area that you like, they need some exposure. I mean, we, can't, we can't get them exposure, <laughs> but we can talk about it yeah, on our little show. We definitely want to talk about it for sure. Cause that would be so much fun. And, you know, being in like being in Oklahoma City now, too, they're like there's so many just underground things going on. There's so many bands and there's so many like artists and muralists and, yeah. you know, and it's like that everywhere. It's, it's like that everywhere. Everywhere has their own little underground coordinated artist movement. And so mm -hmm. it would be really fun to find like some people that we've been influenced by but it was also be really fun to find people that are like in our own little communities and circles and to share their stuff too so yeah i'm excited for that yeah we're all about collaboration we're all about you know uplifting others and uh not putting the focus on ourselves we want this to be we we want to be cheerleaders of every other artist yeah. as well you know so we're yeah super excited about that so yeah a lot of cool things happening on our end it's going to be fun, man. I'm excited. I'm excited to have um, additional things to do, like to research and to share some of my favorite poets over the years. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So. I think we're going to have to do an episode on Bradley Hathaway. Oh, we totally should. He's <laughs> just still doing stuff, too. Yeah, he, he just released out, some. He put out um, some videos not too long ago. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know he was still doing. I knew he was like touring and stuff mm -hmm. like low key but i didn't know he was still doing content which i thought that was really cool yeah yeah he kind of disappeared for a while came back and yeah he, he just sneaking more stuff in there <laughs> i just saw that book the other day yeah. all the hits so far it mm -hmm. was it's uh at our apartment it's like on 
the uh, Hogan has like her books like situated in this really artistic ornate way. And I was mm-hmm. like walking down, up the stairs. And I was like, oh, there's Bradley Hathaway. There I is. forgot I had that book. <laughs> so we should totally do that. That would be awesome. Yeah, I'm down. I mean, we can do a whole episode Heck on that. Yeah, okay. that would be fun. Um, yeah, there's just so much good content out there that we want to share it all with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, anything, any other comments or anything about the, where we're all, all our hits so far, all our hits so <laughs> far. That's, that's what we should, we should steal that from Hathaway. Yeah. All of our hits so far. Um, <laughs> no, man, I think it's going to be good. I think going forward, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it'll be fun to kind of see how the pace changes mm-hmm. or, or if it changes, it may not change at all, but, um, I think it's going to be fun and I'm excited to see if people send in some suggestions for us to react to. I think that would be a lot of fun too. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. We want your suggestions still. Yeah. If there's someone, you know, we want, we need to react to You're like, Oh gosh, you got to listen to this person. Hit us up on Instagram or TikTok. Uh, you can find us at two poets, uh, or two poets podcast, depending on which one. I forget what our username is. It's either Two Poets or Two Poets Podcast. Just go find one of those. If you look up Two Poets, you're probably going to find yeah. it at some point. So I mean, it's a picture of two guys on the cover. Heck so yeah. Yeah, send us your uh, suggestions and who we should react to. Um, so yeah, we're going to be putting out different content. Uh, still doing the podcast, but we'll be doing some video stuff as well. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Yes, I can't um, wait. Yeah, well, thank you all so much for listening. We hope you are going to like what we're doing in the future. Um, you know, Things change. We grow. We figure out what's working, what we want to move next to. We're going to be moving into more awesome content for you all. And yeah. eventually we'll bring back the prompts. But for now, we got enough to start our book. Yeah, so that that's was good. the point of it. We could not have done it without your help. Yes, all of you have been amazing. So thank you all for every prompt you gave. And uh, yeah, so I, as always, I'm Corey. I'm Ben. And we'll see you next time. Peace. Poets is Ben Burley and Corey Keller. The show is produced and edited by Corey Keller. You can also check out more of your hosts by checking out Ben's other podcast, Pages and Pours. You can also check out Corey's other podcasts, Real Random, Homebrew Adventures, and Meeples and Mishaps, all wherever you listen to podcasts.